In this segment, we'll talk about the basics of file-based data import for Oracle Sales Cloud. Here is a brief overview of the application components involved in file-based data import. You start with a text or XML data file and zipped attachments. Once you upload those files through the setup step of your import activity, the files will be stored in the file repository until they're needed for processing. Any changes you make to the application through Application Composer will be visible as you go to map your fields. After you schedule, review, and activate your import activity, the application uses the mappings you specified to populate the interface tables and then the Oracle Sales Cloud base tables. This diagram offers a brief overview of what happens in the application. However, there is a lot that you must do before you start your import activity. Let's take a look at those tasks you should perform to import data into Oracle Sales Cloud. The first step is to compare the fields you have in your source data with the fields available in the application. Knowing what is available is an essential part of the data mapping process. You must understand how the standard application is laid out and how the data is presented in the application. This example of the Trading Community Architecture Party Model illustrates the need to understand the structure of the application so you know how to import data. You likely have contacts in your data. Contact is not an object in Oracle Sales Cloud, but a logical entity representing a person associated to an organization. Contact point, address, and classification are not fields on the contact record in the user interface. This information is held as separate records in different tables so that it can be associated to different entities. For instance, there is no email field on the contact. Email is a contact point record that can be associated to multiple contact or customer records, so there is a one-to-many relationship there. The best way to understand how data is structured in the application is to look at the application itself. However, in some cases it may be helpful to look at an Enterprise Relationship Diagram, or ERD, to understand the data architecture. Continuing with the party model example, here is a portion of an ERD. Looking at the diagram may be useful when you need to better understand relationships between different entities. To find the ERDs and other helpful tools, visit the Oracle Enterprise Repository. I'll talk about this helpful resource more in the additional information segment. Once you understand how the data is presented in the application, you may need to add custom fields, objects, or choiceless values to meet your business needs. Customizations, like adding custom fields, are done in Application Composer. Details about customizations are in the Extensibility Guide. See the additional information segment to learn more about that resource. When you customize the application, keep in mind that you must generate the artifacts required to support import and export. If you don't do this, your custom fields will not be available for mapping in the File Import tool. Lookups are lists of values. Review lookups to be sure the values pertain to your business. You may choose to adopt the standard application lookups or modify the lookups to suit your business. You can edit lookup values through the Setup and Maintenance area of the application. Once you've made all necessary customizations, you must prepare and cleanse your source data files. The application accepts both text-delimited files and XML files. Text-delimited files, such as CSV files, support simple one-to-many relationships or one-to-many-to-one relationships. Text files are simpler to work with because you can edit them in a spreadsheet. However, text files may require more import task executions when dealing with complex relationships. XML files support more complex relationships, like one-to-many-to-many -to -many relationships. XML files can process more data in a single import task. However, editing XML files can be more complicated. You must have knowledge of XML and an editor you are comfortable using, like XML Notepad. Use text files whenever possible. The customer object is inherently more complex, so XML may be a preferred choice for that object. 
CSV is the most common file import format. CSV files are comma-separated value files. However, commas are not the only acceptable delimiter. Other delimiters, like semicolons and quotes, are also allowed. The file can include a header row. In this example, the header row includes the name of both the object and attribute. This is very handy when you get to the mapping part of the file import activity. We provide file-based data import templates to help you get started. See the additional information segment to learn more about those templates. When you prepare your source data files in CSV or XML format, keep these tips in mind. Take the time to clean your data to eliminate unnecessary records. Ask yourself if you need so much history. You will import each object using a separate file. You will need to import those files in a certain order to be sure that a parent object is imported before a child object. For example, you must import sales accounts before you import the other data that will associate to those sales account records. Unique identifiers, or keys, help you identify unique records as well as relationships between objects. Leverage your source system to generate unique keys. Source system keys provide the most flexibility for you and will save steps in the import process. Also, be sure that your choice list values match the Oracle Sales Cloud lookup values. Here is a sample import file and the Manage Sales Statuses page in the application. Here I can compare the status codes on my file to the available codes. Some lookup values are seeded for you when your environment is provisioned, like these sales statuses. Other lookup values are generated as required like business units. Be sure to verify the values in your file with the lookup values listed in the application. Beyond lookups, you can check other key data directly in the application. In this example, I can match the product group ID from my source file with the reference number in the Manage Product Groups task. You can also use reports, data export, or web services to gather data. Once your source files are clean and ready, you can create your file import activities in the application. Keep in mind that there is a correct order when importing objects. For example, you should import sales accounts first, so those records are available when you go to import contacts and other data related to sales accounts. See the other segments in this series for a walkthrough of the steps involved in creating an import activity in the application. Once your import activity is complete, you should check the status and review any errors. Then, view the imported data in the application. If necessary, fix import errors and re-import. Again, see the other segments in this series for a demonstration. That concludes this segment. Thank you.